What's up, everybody? Hey, we're going to do this a little bit different this time. Normally, I would do a top five XYZ foods while I'm either at the store or while I'm in the studio, but I figured, hey, let's actually do this live. So I actually have all the products right here. I know it's a little bit of a sneak peek, but I wanted to be able to do this live so we could also have some interaction. I thought that this might be a, a little bit more of a fun way to do this. So what I did is this morning, I went to Target and I had to pick up some stuff and I was like, wait a minute. Target has some really interesting, uh, like just good kinds of fats and so much about fatty acids in general, just, I don't know, people just don't know the full cold, hard truth, right? So I figured, well, why don't I do a video where I actually break down the different kinds of fats, but break down my favorite fats, whether it's keto or not, that you can get at Target because a lot of people have Targets close by and a lot of these you can get at Walmart too, but I am going to break down specific brands only because the price point. There is no paid promotion in this whatsoever. This is purely just things that I would buy at Target. So that is a promise. And I just based it upon price and also upon, hey, this is a good healthy fat. So you're gonna learn some interesting stuff. I do ask that you please go ahead and hit that uh, thumbs up button, hit that like button, but then also comment where you're watching from. And that way we can just get some good engagement going here and we can uh, have a bunch of fun with this, okay? So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, one that you probably aren't surprised to see here, is going to be macadamia nuts. Okay. Well, first of all, I will say macadamia nuts that are sold at Target for whatever reason have a really good roasted nutty flavor. Okay. They're roasted, but they're not roasted in any oil. So when you're looking at nuts, and I did like a full like Costco video on this, it's coming out soon. When you're shopping for any kind of, of nuts at all and you look at roasted ones, you want to make sure that they're not roasted in any kind of oil. Okay, so here's what's important. If you air fry them or, or excuse me, air roast them or anything like that, dry roast them, you're going to be much better off. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll take a perfectly good fat from a nut and then they'll put it into a, um, a canola oil or a vegetable oil and it will completely throw off the fatty acid profile. It's not like we're just looking for a fat to consume, whether we're on a ketogenic diet or not. It's not like we're just looking for a basic fat. We actually have to pay attention to certain things. So what do I like most about macadamia nuts? Extremely, extremely high in monounsaturated fats. Probably one of the best fatty acid profiles for just overall monounsaturated fats. What that means is that it is a stable fat that's going to provide you with A, a little bit of energy when you're on a ketogenic diet, but most importantly, very powerful antioxidant pro uh, properties. What I really liked about the macadamia nut, however, is one that people don't talk about a whole lot. You see, people will say, well, macadamia nuts aren't that high in omega-3s. So is it really that good of a nut? Well, let me tell you something. Omega-3s, when they come from any kind of plant source, are negligible to begin with. Okay. That being said, you still do want nuts that are high in omega-3s. That's a different story for a different day. The point is, it's relatively uh, negligible. Okay. That's not what you want to worry about. So when you go to the grocery store and you see, oh, omega-3 rich nuts, Oh my gosh, come on. You're going to get more omega-3s out of one fish oil than you out of that whole bag of nuts. So I just encourage you to not really worry about the omega-3 profile too much because it's not the biggest thing. But what you should be concerned with is what's called the omega-6 profile. Okay. The omega-6 profile is what is damaging. And most nuts are very high in omega-6s. So especially when we're following a ketogenic protocol, we want to have you know, nice, abundant omega-3 profile if possible, but more importantly, a low omega-6 profile. These little suckers, macadamias, 3% omega-6, whereas a lot of nuts are like 50, 60%. So significantly, significantly better. I'm going to turn the camera just a little bit just because that light behind me is washing me out a little bit. Hang on one second, guys. Bear with me. There we go. Okay, so I've got all the, got a lot of the things here. Kind of keeping them off screen just a little bit. A, so they don't block me, but B, so I don't get, totally give everything away. I uh, just want to shout some people out and say hello really quick. We've got Tracy in Long Island. We've got Stan. What's going on? We've lost over 50 pounds following this channel. That is so awesome. Uh, we've got Ted in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We've got Gary in uh, Denmark. Wow. We've got Tristan. We've got, um, man, Danny Ortega, 35 pounds since September. This is so awesome. Katarina, Fort Worth, Texas. We, guys, keep on commenting where you're watching from. Um, that's, that's honestly, even if I don't reply immediately, even if I don't talk to you right now, now, I go back through and I look at this stuff because it's really, really important to me to see like where people are coming from and, and all that stuff. Um, man, I probably should have sat out front. It's getting kind of dark already. Oh, well. Um, anyhow, let's go ahead and let's continue. So here's the thing with the macadamia nuts. 
very low phytic acid content too. So what that means is you're gonna have a very low level of uh, anti-nutrients. Normally with a lot of different nuts, you have to be careful of anti-nutrients. You have to be careful of things that will essentially chelate minerals in your gut and chelate uh, vitamins and stop them from absorbing. It's kind of the big beef, if you want to call it that, that a lot of the carnivore community has with like the plants right now is the anti-nutrient thing. So if you're looking at nuts, macadamia nuts usually are the best. Uh, peely nuts are probably the best, best, but you're not going to find them in a regular grocery store. And this is stuff you're going to find at Target. Okay. So this is, if you go down your neighborhood Target, you're good to go. Hey guys, we've got like 500 people on this broadcast, but only 75 thumbs up. And I know that the video doesn't suck that bad. So can we go ahead and, and just hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help this uh, channel out and just gets these videos up there. So anyhow, the big thing with macadamia nuts outside of just the overall fact that they don't damage you is they're very high in oleic acid as well. Now, who knows what oleic acid does? Probably a lot of you because I talk about it so much on my channel to the point where I probably drive you nuts. Oleic acid has really powerful ways of activating what is called PPAR alpha. Okay, PPAR alpha is a genetic process, so it's a gene. We turn on this PPAR and it allows the activation of what is called an uncoupling protein. What this means in simple, simple terms is indirectly macadamia nuts and the oleic acid in them actually trigger these proteins to activate in your body that dissipate heat. So I want you to think of like a dorm room, a college dorm room that has a cruddy little radiator heater. Okay. So the radiator heater dissipates heat. Well, um, if you plug it into the wall, the electricity is going to go down the cord and it's going to go to the radiator and it's going to dissipate as heat. It's the idea of a radiator heater. Well, it's doing the same thing inside your body when it comes down to uncoupling proteins. These proteins dissipate your calories as heat. It's a really cool process. So that's why they make the list. Now I'm just going to show you really quick again. Okay, see, so I've got these foods here. So we're going to have some fun with it, okay? And I encourage you to stick with me through this whole thing. I know people are going to be coming and going throughout this video, so it's all good. We've already covered macadamia nuts. These are all things you can get at Target. I'm not at Target right now. Let's go ahead and let's go on to, let's do this one. Okay, mayonnaise. So it's easy to find mayonnaise. It's not going to have an issue. You can go to a gas station and probably find a little tub or a little packet of soybean oil mayonnaise. But mayonnaise is a superfood. And if you pay attention to the right kinds of fats that are in mayonnaise, you can actually allow yourself to have a pretty darn cool, honestly, fat burning experience because the right oils with mayonnaise really end up making just a delicious treat. So the cool thing that I put with Sir Kensington's here, this is that, that brand. And again, there's no paid promotion. This is, I just went to Target and I shopped around a little bit to find the best fats. Okay. So Sir Kensington's avocado oil mayonnaise. And by the way, the macadamia nuts were just regular, uh, Archer Farms, which is like the Target brand. Okay. I think these were like eight 99 for 10 ounces, which sounds expensive, but macadamia nuts are expensive to begin with. Okay, and then Sir Kensington's, this was like $3.99 on sale, which is actually a pretty good price for good quality avocado oil mayonnaise. So here was what we've got. We've got avocado oil. We've got certified humane free range oaks. Uh, we've got water, distilled vinegar, salt, lime juice, concentrate, mustard flour, mustard extract, black pepper, and lime oil. Super clean ingredients. The next best one was going to be the Primal Kitchen. Now, the Primal Kitchen probably was a little bit better because the ingredients were organic, not the oil, though. The oil wasn't organic, and the eggs technically weren't organic. Everything else was organic. Well, because of that, they were able to charge $8.99 for it. And I wanted to make sure that this was bang for the buck here. So Sir Kensington's being $3.99 for actually a same size jug is what you would get with Primal Kitchen for $8.99. It just made more sense with the Sir Kensington's. Now, we talk about the fatty acid profile once again. There is a little bit of saturated fat uh, in this. Let's see, we've got... Yeah, well, one gram. It's not bad. Okay, and then we've got a high level of, once again, the monounsaturated fats. Now... Again, we're talking oleic acid here. Avocado oil is very high in that oleic acid. So if you're just joining this broadcast, oleic acid has an indirect way of generating body heat within the body. If we can generate body heat, obviously it potentially allows us to burn more fat. So I'm all about that. Really interesting stuff. What I really like about avocado oil, about this mayonnaise in particular, is avocado oil has something known as omega-7, which is palmitoleic acid. Omega-7 isn't talked about a whole lot, and I think it's simply because it's just not, um, this is not popularized yet. People aren't always talking about omega-7. It's just not that sexy sounding. But omega-7s increase the bioavailability of omega-3s within the body. So imagine this. Imagine you don't consume a lot of omega-3s, but you want your body to utilize the smaller amount that you do get in. Well, therefore, omega-7s are going to help the availability of the omega-3s in the body. So big fan of that. But also, avocado oil is just much more stable. It's a very stable oil. So one of the things that I always con concerned with, with any kind of mayonnaise, is the instability of the oils, right? Okay, you open it up, it gets exposed to oxygen, and then once it's exposed to oxygen, 
you're dealing with all kinds of, well, oxidation. And those kinds of fats uh, that are unstable, like olive oil mayonnaise, I don't like that because it oxidizes a lot easier. Although it is still a better mayonnaise, you have to make sure you're refrigerating it. Avocado oil is just much more stable. Okay. So it is, a, once again, a monounsaturated fat. And this is just a good deal for that there. Uh, I think even at Whole Foods, it's like $6.99. So again, this is all just Target stuff. Now we do get on down the line to, uh, let's go, with, yeah, let's go with this one. Okay. So this is olive oil. And again, for those of you just hopping on here, zero paid promotions on this. Okay. This was me going to the store. And so I know I'm talking about brands, but I'm telling you the best, best bang for the buck. Uh, six forty nine for a good organic extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Organic does matter with olive oil. Absolutely. Because they are heavily, heavily treated. You have to be making sure you're getting olive oil in a dark bottle. If it's not in a dark bottle, you know, it's cheap. Okay. If they try to show you the oil and things like that, it's not real or it's, it's not good. Very, very important. It's a very fragile oil. High monounsaturated fat, once again, 73 or 75%, I believe. So we're talking probably one of the most abundant monounsaturated fat profiles. What that means is we, again, have that oleic acid content. And I've done some videos that talk about, you know, avocado oil versus olive oil. I would have grabbed an uh, avocado oil over this olive oil, except for the fact that I already grabbed the avocado oil mayonnaise and I wanted to have good talking points and didn't want to be redundant with the avocado oil. I do not recommend that you cook with olive oil. Remember, olive oil is a lot more fragile. Okay. It doesn't have as high of a smoke point. Now, even though it's still a very, very, very high quality fat, it has a higher level of some, um, some polyunsaturated fats, which make it a little bit more unstable. So we have to be careful with that. What that means is that a monounsaturated fat has one hydrogen double bond. Okay. It means that in essence, to make this very short for this video, it's very, very stable. Okay it's almost as stable as a saturated fat. Saturated fat is very stable, obviously. It doesn't get oxidized as much. It doesn't denature because it's saturated when it's essentially at a cooler temperature. Uh, monounsaturated is as close to saturated as you can get without it being saturated. And then you have a polyunsaturated fat, which have multiple double hydrogen bonds, which leave lots of spaces open to be denatured. And what that means is that although a polyunsaturated fat can be very, 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 very healthy, it doesn't have a long shelf life. So things like a fish oil, right? If you cut open a fish and you leave it on your counter, how long is it going to take before it just reeks? Okay. Right. Okay. Hey, I'm going to call this guy out. So Chris money says, so first he tells us that microbes aren't bad for you. And now he's trying to tell you to get organic products. Okay, Chris, I am going to call you out on that because yeah, yesterday I did a video talking about, I put out a video talking about microwaves. First of all, I think a lot of people didn't necessarily like pay attention to the full piece there. When it comes down to the nutrient profile of your foods, it doesn't damage them as much to microwave as it does to boil them. Okay. Does that mean that there's electromagnetic field issues? Okay. Yeah, there very well could be. But the other thing that we have to consider is when you cook foods at any temperature, especially like over a hot grill, the heterocyclic amines and the advanced glycation end products that have an effect on your body are vastly worse than what has been proven with microwaves. And I do look at the science. Does it mean that I cook with a microwave all the time? Heck no. But there's people that watch my channel that want to know that information. And it's been asked time and time and time and time and time again, do microwaves kill the nutrients of vegetables? No. As a matter of fact, microwaves make the nutrients more available in vegetables. Is there some distortion of proteins? There has been like two studies that show the distortion of some proteins in terms of unfolding, but you know what else unfolds proteins? Guess what? Putting them in an oven and guess what? Leaving them sitting on the counter also unfolds proteins. Okay. So we have to always challenge the hypothesis no matter what. And I encourage everyone, no matter what, no matter what, okay. Challenge my hypothesis too, but do not do not be a jerk. Okay. So you can challenge my hypothesis all you want, because I am going to look at research and I'm going to find things out and I'm going to put it out in front of people and they can, I can disseminate however I want. I'm not going to preach, but I will put it out there for people. And if people want to form their own opinions on it, they are absolutely entitled to do so. But I will stand by the fact that when it comes down to vegetables, I don't really know about protein. And quite honestly, a lot of people don't know about the proteins you are going to preserve more nutrients with a microwave because there aren't a whole lot of proteins to distort. Okay. When it comes down to the preservation of water soluble vitamins, water soluble vitamins and minerals that get heavily denatured and leached out when you cook via different methods, cooking via a microwave actually preserves those vitamins and minerals. So when we are addressing that question, that is all there is to it. Now regarding the RF, sure. There's a big difference between RF and EMF. Anyway, I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole enough. I just had to, Chris, you bounce. Okay. I don't want the negativity. Let's go ahead and let's get back to fun. All right. Next up on the list, after we've covered olive oil, let's go ahead and let's do, let's actually, let's do ghee. So ghee, 
I've talked about ghee all the time, okay? And yes, I am gonna suggest that you go for organic ghee for one main reason, okay? Whatever is being fed to the cow is more than likely going to transfer into the fat. It's going to transfer into the dairy and it's gonna transfer into the fat. So the fatty acid profile of milk is super, 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 super important. Ghee is clarified butter. Now, here's the cool thing. Very high in short chain fatty acids, which directly, directly fuel the actual enterocytes and fuel the, the cells within the lining of our gut, right? So the endothelial cells. So what happens with ghee is they take milk fat, okay, and they completely clarify it to the point where there's no dairy in it. So why does it make my list at Target? Well, first of all, this was a really good deal for this. This, I believe, was six seventy nine, dollars which for organic ghee is a really, really good price. And Target doesn't have a whole lot of ghee selections, but you're starting to see ghee at more and more and more and more stores. So it's pretty exciting to see. Now, when we talk about the saturated fat, it's important that I mention this. We have different kinds of saturated fats, okay? We have... Um, Meristic, we have palmitic, we have steric, and not all fats are created equal. We have to remember this. Fats are not created equal. So even a saturated fat that we look at is not just a saturated fat. So we might see some saturated fats. Hang on, guys. I'm gonna, let me adjust this once again. I'm just kind of hiding from the light here. There we go. A nice outdoor setting today, so it works out kind of well. Actually, you know what? While I'm readjusting, so many new people have hopped on here. I just invite everyone to comment where they're watching from. Uh, so please go ahead and just comment where you're watching from, say hello, and that way I can shout you out and say hello. By the way, I just appreciate so many people, uh, so many people standing up for what I put out yesterday with the microwave thing, okay? I'm not ever, ever saying that people should absolutely use a microwave. In fact, I would probably say I use a microwave a minimal amount of time, but I think a lot of people do. They nuke their water with it, they nuke their, anyway. I just appreciate everyone. Okay, we got Kansas City, we got San Jose, we've got Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Livermore, Louisiana, we've got California, we've got SoCal, we've got Manhattan, Deb Jordan, what's going on? We've got Angela, we've got Deanna, we've got, man, you guys are awesome. Mark Castro in Fontana, we've got uh, Alicia in Brea, California. I'm just going so fast, I'm trying to cut out, shout out who I can. Um, Chris Money says, would you microwave an avocado? Probably not. Um, let's see, we've got Spain in the house. We got Madison, Wisconsin. We've got Luxembourg. So much international. This is super, super awesome. Thank you guys. And guys, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button because it really does help this video out a lot. And the purpose here is to really just get this content out to as many people as we can. And we see on YouTube, it's harder and harder to get our content out there. So I like doing this stuff live because it at least allows me to be able to interact with people. Um, okay. So let's get back to the ghee for just a second. Why I'm a big fan of ghee for the most part though is because the short chain fatty acids and because it doesn't denature when you cook with it. So yeah, you get a bunch of different benefits, but when you're feeding butyric acid, which is what the like C4, okay, so when you have a fat chain, it goes, or a carbon chain, you have a fat, it goes from uh, various carbon chain lengths. So you've got, um, maybe you've heard of different uh, MCT oils that have different lengths, right? If you, if you Google that, you're gonna see, oh, there's C8, there's C10, there's C12. What the heck does that mean? Well, that is how many carbon chains are attached to the fat. That's all it is. So there's a fatty acid with a tail and uh, the tail is a carbon chain. So the shorter the carbon chain, the faster the fat digests. Well, butyrate, okay, or butyric acid is a C4. It is very, very fast to digest. And what that means is in, a, in essence, it's not really digesting, it's more so fueling. So the gut, the actual cells within our gut and the endothelial layer eat this stuff. And this stuff is also very stable to cook with. And I was starting to say before I jumped to conclusion or before I jumped over, excuse me, uh, about saturated fats. The saturated fats do make a difference because there's different forms of them. Now, is the saturated fat in ghee the best form of saturated fat? Not necessarily, okay? And I'm gonna get to some really interesting stuff when I talk about one of these other saturated fats that's here in just a second. But ideally, I would use this for cooking and I would drizzle it over a little bit of broccoli and things like that. Remember, whenever you have some good quality saturated fats like this, you're going to help yourself absorb some of the fat soluble nutrients like vitamin K and things like that that normally don't get absorbed unless you have some fat with them. So I always recommend having a little bit of fat, even just a quarter tablespoon or something like this with, um, with your veggies. It just helps you out a lot. But the best part about this, only 2% polyunsaturated fatty acids. Okay, what that means is it's exceptionally stable. And that is exactly why, ladies and gentlemen, it can just hang out on my counter and doesn't have to be in the fridge. Super stable, 
takes a lot for this to go rancid. Okay. So man, I'm so glad there's a lot of people saying that this is the first time they've been able to catch me live. So I'm stoked. Um, and I know this is an odd time here. We are, you know, probably closing in on six o'clock Eastern time on Valentine's day. So I'm well aware that this is just a video that's going to be watched uh, on replay by a lot of people. So I appreciate everyone that's being here. Um, guys, can you please go ahead and hit, do hit that thumbs up, hit that thumbs up on that. It's just going to help this video rank a lot more so we can just get it out there. Okay, next up on my list, okay, let's put the key over here. Uh, just to recap, you guys, I know a lot of people hopping on here. Uh, we had macadamia nuts at Target. Okay, I think uh, $8.99 for these guys. Okay, then we had organic. This one was uh, uh, Terra Delissa, I believe. Organic, it was like $6.49, I believe, for this organic olive oil. That was another top fat. And then I had Sir Kensington's avocado mayonnaise. It beat out Primal Kitchen simply because the price point. And because I saw that Primal Kitchen was using organic ingredients only on the ones where they had to use small amounts of ingredients, saving some money, but still being able to claim organic. Whereas Sir Kensington's just went for the good stuff. Uh, then we had the ghee. Okay, so we've got ghee and now we're moving right along. My personal favorite dairy of all time, goat cheese. All right, so I'm not the biggest fan of dairy, right? I, I keep it minimal. The dairy I do have is usually gonna be goat cheese, Technically, ghee is still dairy. Uh, the neat thing about goat cheese is it is a different kind of protein, okay? So you have different proteins, and you have what are called casein proteins in dairy. And casein proteins digest really slow, but in typical cow dairy, the casein proteins are what are called an A1 beta casein. This goat cheese is A2. Now, what that means to you is it's a genetic difference. There's a, a genetic mutation that causes cow dairy to be A1. Thousands of years ago, cow dairy was actually A2, but now it's called A1 because of a genetic mutation that's occurred within the cows. Now that A1 protein converts into something known as BCM7 within our body, okay? This BCM7 is bad news because it's a bioactive opioid, opioid and triggers some stuff in our brain to occur. Goat cheese is an A2, so that means it doesn't have the addictive properties and it doesn't have the issues uh, downstream that we have with say like A, um, A1. Now, what's cool about the goat cheese too, is it's got a high degree of medium chain triglycerides in it. So if you are doing a ketogenic diet, it's got a lot of caprylic acid in it. If you ever wonder what the taste uh, of goat cheese comes from, that kind of tanginess, that bite that you get in the back of your mouth, that is from the MCTs. The caprylic acid actually gives it an interesting taste. So of all the ketogenic cheeses out there, this is going to be the cheese that's going to generate ketones the best. Okay, it is a darn good cheese. And this was $349 for a big thing of goat cheese. Okay, I'm not going to go through this in a week. And the nice thing is goat cheese is pretty stable. It actually stays well in the fridge for a long period of time. Um, now, I do want to talk about the saturated fat for a second because it's pretty important. Technically, MCTs are, well, some will say that they fall under a saturated fat, but they kind of don't. Like, okay, they're, they're, in a way, they're a saturated short chain or a saturated medium chain, but it's more so, I don't even like put them in that category, but there's a lot of saturated fat in general. And there's a lot of saturated fat coming from what's called palmitic and mysteric acid, which is not the best saturated fats. And I'm gonna explain something to you. This is why cheese in general needs to be in moderation. Hey guys, can we please make sure that we, um, you know, hit that thumbs up button. I'm not sure if people just don't know where it is or anything like that, but I do want to make sure we hit that thumbs up button because it does help us out a lot. Um, and it also, there we go. Now it's going up and also make sure to share this video. Okay. This is going to be one that people can hop on and ask some questions. Now let's go ahead and <laughs> someone says I'm heating cooked spinach in the microwave right now. Doesn't mean that goat cheese is bad because it has just a different kind of saturated fat that I normally wouldn't recommend. Not necessarily. Okay, so we've got lauric acid, we've got myristic acid, we've got palmitic acid, and we have steric acid. Those are the common saturated fats that we're going to find in beef, in some plant sources, in cheese, things like that. Let's talk about them for a second. Have you ever noticed that if you eat a lot of saturated fat, your LDL cholesterol goes up? Let me adjust this. Okay, well, it doesn't mean that saturated fat is bad, but there is a reason that saturated fat triggers your LDL cholesterol to go up. Okay, LDL is not bad in the first place. Okay, LDL cholesterol just isn't even a cholesterol. It's a transporter that delivers cholesterol uh, to the cell. Okay, it goes from the liver to the cell. Point, very simple. Okay, here's what happens. Saturated fats, for no particular good, bad, or ugly reason, they turn off the receptors in the liver to LDL. 
So what does that mean? So if LDL is just a boat that is traveling around carrying cholesterol, we want it to be able to dock at its docking station. Well, it turns out that certain fats, certain saturated fats disarm or turn off the docking station at the liver. So that means normally LDL would come in and it would just dock, right? But in this case, the dock is closed. So the LDL is just like, can't get in. So the LDL has no choice but to continue to float around the bloodstream waiting for a dock to open up. So that is why saturated fat, why it does that, we don't know. It just deactivates certain LDL receptors. I'm not worried about LDL levels being high. I'm really not. What I am worried about is them being around for a long time. LDL cholesterols oxidize easily. And when LDL cholesterol gets oxidized, that's when we have a problem. So let me tell you something. LDL only becomes a problem if it gets acted upon by sugar or by other oxidative damage, right? So LDL in by itself is actually perfectly healthy and perfectly normal. But when it gets acted upon by sugar, we have a problem. So the longer that it's in the bloodstream, the more opportunities we have for sugar to hit it, the more opportunities we have for something to damage it. So we're always looking for saturated fats that are not going to disarm the liver as much. All dairy fats are going to, I say disarm the liver, that's kind of a not true. It doesn't disarm the liver, but just for analogy sake. Okay. So goat cheese is better than some of the other ones. So again, in the world of cheeses that aren't the best thing for you, goat cheese is going to be the best. Uh, feta is going to be a next second. Anyhow, recapping really quick. We've got macadamia nuts, probably the best fat burning nut that's out there. Also the lowest carb, lowest anti-nutrient, lowest omega-6. Okay. We have olive oil, organic olive oil. Okay. This brand was Terra Delissa. Okay. And then we had Sir Kensington's avocado mayonnaise. Go for avocado oil mayonnaise, not olive oil mayonnaise, and definitely not soybean oil or canola oil mayonnaise, which is 99% of them. I just filmed a video done at, uh, did at Walmart where we tried to find a mayonnaise. We couldn't even find a mayonnaise. We could not find a mayonnaise that uh, didn't have soybean or, or canola. Right. Okay. Then we've got uh, ghee. Okay. Really good price on ghee here. I think it's, I want to say it was $6.99 or $6.49. I can't remember. I've got the receipt. I could show you. Uh, anyway, really good bargain on this. And then we got goat cheese. Okay. I've got a couple more fats to go through and I'm going to end on the very last one. I've got two more. Okay. So please don't leave because we're going to go through these two. Even if you have to mute the video and walk away and come back, please don't leave. Okay. Then we get into target brand, simply balanced, unsweetened coconut milk, $1.29. And we're talking California prices here. Okay. Like I'm in Monterey County right now and Monterey County is not a, like, like the grocery stores are pretty expensive. So I was impressed $1.29. So you go to like middle America, you go to uh, the Midwest, you go to um, Southeast. This might even be like 89 cents at Target. This is one of the best fats that you can get. And it's so overlooked because everyone is going for, um, they're always like trying to find like the, the cartons of coconut milk as like a beverage. There's a big difference. So normally I would go for coconut cream, but I could only find coconut milk there. And this one is, it says light, but it's still, still pretty decent. The only difference between coconut milk and coconut cream is the ratio of coconut meat to water. Okay. That's all there is to it. If you are lucky enough to have a target that carries coconut butter, that would make the cut instead of this. Coconut butter is like peanut butter, but made from coconuts. It's so unbelievably awesome. The stuff is just epic, epic, epic. Ooh, Rich, good question. I just saw this and I talked about it a lot yesterday. High oleic sunflower oil. Okay, here, I gotta stop. Okay, how many people have seen that on a label before? High oleic sunflower oil. Ole it sounds like a terrible preservative or something. It's actually not bad. Okay, sunflower oil is not that stable. Okay, sunflower butter, sunflower, I actually, if you can get it really fresh, it's great. The sunflower butter isn't that great. But when they take the, what they do is they take the oleic acid, which is the stuff that's really good that we talk about in olive oil and everything like that, and they concentrate that. Now I've got to turn again to get back in the light. Hang on. Hang on, guys. There we go. Okay, so what, that's better. Everyone can see me, right? Like on my screen, it looks really, really dark, but... Anyhow, so they take the oleic acid and they concentrate it and they take that oleic acid and it's more stable. So they use that to make it shelf stable. Is it amazing stuff? Is it something that I would seek out? No, it's not something I would seek out because it's still high oleic. It's still not that great. It's still processed. Okay. But 
it's not as bad as people think. It's not like some crazy preservative. It is an oil that is much more stable and it's still a high, higher quality monounsaturated fat than a lot of these polyunsaturated fats. I would much rather see high oleic sunflower oil than I would see some kind of trans fat or hydrogenated. Okay. Uh, let me grab these back over again. So when we look at like any kind of coconut cream or anything like that, again, we're looking at uh, the MCTs. We're looking at the healthy saturated fats that are helping us out. And we're looking at basically just the stability of it. So make this with, you know, curry or anything like that. All right. Now I'm going to show you this one, but don't you dare go to Target and wipe it all out. Because if I go to Target and I find that I can't get this anymore because it's always out of stock, I'm going to shut this channel down. Just kidding. I am a huge fan of unsweetened baking chocolate. And yes, it is a fat. And yes, it is a healthy fat. And a lot of people, especially in kind of the, um, I don't know, I guess the, there's a lot of communities that are just throwing a lot of like chocolate and certain plants under the bus and stuff like that. Uh, despite what some people will say, chocolate is one of the best fats that you can get. So what this is, is 100% unsweetened baking chocolate. Ordinarily, I'd want to try to go organic. I didn't see an organic brand version there. Um, $2.49 for this. It's easy to eat a bunch of it though. And you still have to remember, okay, eight servings per container, serving size one square, uh, so 70 calories. So if you were to eat this whole thing, you're looking at 700-ish calories, right? You're looking at a lot of calories. So be very, 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 very careful because it's easy to eat a lot of it. The good news is it's crazy, crazy bitter, so you're probably not going to eat all of it. But what I usually do is I melt it down, add stevia to it, or melt it down and add monk fruit to it, and then freeze it. And then it turns into a sweet chocolate that I just made my own inexpensive, fancy keto chocolate that still gets me the really good fatty acid profile. Now, we still get the endocannabinoid effect. We still get all the effects of chocolate that help us feel good, that give us the antioxidants. Perfect stuff. Okay. And dandamide is the big one. And dandamide is an endocannabinoid that really does help you feel good. And you know what? Say what you want. Chocolate does help you feel good. Here's the big thing about this. Remember all the saturated fat that I was talking about. Oh yeah, someone asked how many carbohydrates. Four grams of carbohydrates per serving, three of which are fiber. So one gram of net carbs. This is Target brand, right? So now people will say like the Lily's chocolate. No, come on guys, it tastes good, but the Lily's chocolate is like chocolate plus inulin plus erythritol plus some, I think chicory root, I can't remember right offhand. It's bloat city, guys. We don't want to go, I'll send bloat city and we'll all be miserable. I don't hate Lily. It's like, I'll use it from time to time. But if you have an option to make your own, first of all, Lily's is like, $6.99 for some chips. This was $2.49. I mean, I don't know. So the thing is, I, I don't dislike erythritol, but I also see where some of these brands are going when they add inulin to it. You ever notice you get crazy, 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 like bloated after you have it? Yeah, that's why. It's not digesting. It's heavy, heavy, heavy prebiotic fibers to the point that your body can't even break it down. So what I was saying with this, the saturated fat profile of this stuff is so bad to the bone. Okay, remember I was talking about how certain saturated fats will turn off the liver's ability to receive LDL, therefore causing your LDL levels to go high? There are specific forms of saturated fats that do not do that. One in particular, and it is called steric acid. Okay, and when we look at chocolate, the steric acid in chocolate is very, very, very good for you, but also does not have that effect on the liver. So that means Basically, you want to be looking at that ratio of steric acid to palmitic acid to uh, myristic acid, lauric acid, and further on down the line. Very high amount. I can't remember exactly what the percentage is. It's it's a pretty darn good amount. It's like when you look at chocolate, um, I want to say it's like 60% steric or something like that. It's just much, much higher. So point is, is of all the saturated fats that are out there, it's got the best one your LDL levels are not going to increase with this saturated fat. So stable fat, that means it could be actually cooked as long as you don't burn it and it's not going to break down. So it makes my list. So for those of you that are just joining in, because I noticed we have a lot of people that are jumping on here now, can we please go ahead and hit that th thumbs up button? Please, please pound it. Hit that thumbs up button. That helps us out a lot. And then comment where you're watching from. Okay, then we've got, first off, the roasted macadamia nuts. Okay, got these at Target. Sir Kensington's mayo, got that at Target. Avocado oil, Sir Kensington's mayo. Okay. Then I got uh, Terra Delisa. I can never remember that brand. Extra virgin organic olive oil. Then I got, excuse me, Ghee. Okay, organic Carrington's brand. And then I got goat cheese, which I couldn't find organic there. And then I got coconut cream. And then I got my unsweetened baking chocolate.
I am in heaven with all this stuff. Okay. So we are all here looking at very low carbohydrate foods and whether you are keto or not, these are going to be a perfect choice for you simply because they provide you with the right kinds of fats. Now, word to the wise, your body, no matter what, is always going to want to store fat from dietary fat. So it should always take this stuff in moderation. One of the things, just FYI, that I've been doing, and this is just fun you know, treat for those of you that follow me and like to know the weird kind of experiments I'm doing. I started playing around with taking a few days uh, during the week and doing low fat keto. Uh, as a shock to my system, because I've been seeing some interesting science that the body treats fat that it pulls through uh, lipolysis different from fat that it generates directly through ketogenesis. So basically, fats that you consume go to the liver and get turned into ketones, but fats that you that go through lipolysis and fats that actually get mobilized out of your body and turn into ketones might be more efficient. You might burn through them faster. Hence why fasting burns so much more fat than just keto, because you're actually running on your own fuel. So the point was, is, hey, now and then, and this is not something anyone should ever do permanently, take a day or two and just do keto, but cut the fat down, way down, like 60, 70%. It's very difficult and it's not sustainable by any means. But I did notice like overnight, overnight, just a huge increase in my visibility of my abs. I mean, it just was like, whoa, this is earth shattering because you automatically end up in somewhat of a deficit. Is it something you want to do all the time? No. Point is, is I know all too well that it's way too easy to overdo the fats. And so much of the co low carb community will just tell you, eat the fats, eat the fats. So you generate ketones. Your body is ruthlessly efficient at taking your own stored fat and turning it into ketones. So let it do that. Okay. That's why I'm a big fan of fasting. I mean, people say I'm the keto guy. I always try to correct them. Be like, actually, I'm more the fasting guy. Keto is just kind of a, you know, also what I do, but I'm more interested in the effects of fasting because wow, you're running on your own fat tissue and you're teaching your body rather than just constantly priming it. Just, come on. You guys know me enough to know that I don't dislike keto. I'm just saying I probably am more of a fasting guy if I had to pick one or the other. Um, so this broke it all down. Now let's go ahead. And, I've only got like 18% battery on my laptop here. So it dies down pretty quick. So let's go ahead and let's ask some, uh, answer some questions. Tom Dalton, you said, where do you get pure monk fruit? Um, I like to get mine uh, pure monk fruit. I get it from Lakanto. They do have theirs that have erythritol and everything, but they also have the little liquids that are pure monk fruit. Um, let's see. There's some other questions here. Wow. A lot of people. That's uh, some really cool stuff. Um, uh, yeah, actually, you're you actually are right. Random Random Loser DK says clarified butter is not ghee, close but not the same. Yeah, you actually are totally correct. Clarified butter is pro uh, I don't even want to say processed, but is created a little bit differently. And uh, clarified butter, I can't remember. Um, Random Loser DK uh, is is it ghee that is pure or is it clarified butter? And they're very very similar. Anyhow, uh, sorry, I've got an airplane flying overhead. So in case you guys are are hearing that, I'll readjust this so I can see the screen here better. Uh, where to get peely nuts. Uh, you, uh, Whole Foods has peely nuts, so you're good there. Uh, question says, can you make a video on what foods are recommended at theme parks? That's a point. I usually say uh, just bring your own almonds, stuff like that, because the almonds that you are going to find there are just totally drenched in garbage. Otherwise, you're going to find churros and stuff like that. Uh, Ventriloquix says, Thomas, key foods on a budget. Ah, that's a good one. Like the top like 10 foods to be to have on a budget. I would. That's a really good one. So I'll touch on a couple really quick. Lean beef, probably going to be the best just because you're going to get the just best mineral profile out of a meat source that way. Um, eggs, okay, you can go for cage free, um, try to go for pasture raised, but relatively inexpensive, and you're going to get the most abundant profile there in terms of minerals. I'll have to do a whole video on that, but that hopefully that helps you out and get you started. Um, Someone says, can you break a fast with bulletproof coffee? Uh, Shelly, I would not recommend that because I don't like having a lot of fats coming in right when you break a fast. Uh, Megabus says, what's a good carb limit a day? 50 grams or 20 grams? How about split the difference? I'd say 40, somewhere in 40. Okay. And then guys, I will say down in the description below, I linked out some of my other videos. So if you haven't seen um, like the complete guide to keto or the complete guide to intermittent fasting, if you're looking to learn that process, I put it down below in the description so you can check that out. But also I uh, linked out to my like, eating out cheat sheet. So on my website, I have like free downloads for uh, eating out cheat sheets for uh, sleep optimization tactics, things like that. So just on the go things really, really simple. So you can check them out after this video. Uh, Z Andrew says from Charleston, West Virginia, you have great content. We fast every day, 18 hours, 67 years old and feel like teenagers. Uh, any harm with fasting every day, just two meals a day. Uh, yeah, you can, you can slow down your metabolism. So I would not, um, I would not recommend doing that every day. Chris money says you're not going to find healthy and organic choices at Walmart. 
Um, I will actually beg to differ. So Primal Kitchen has a bunch of stuff at Walmart now. Um, I will say whenever I do Walmart hauls, I'm pleasantly surprised each time I go back with how much of a change they're making. You have to remember, uh, you know, the millennials are starting to become like stronger consumers, right? Okay. Millennials are, are, are getting up there where they're in their twenties, thirties and they're buying, they have buying power now. And they realize that millennials are more health conscious. So of course, like you look at, um, what Kraft Heinz bought Primal Kitchen. Primal Kitchen is all organic paleo stuff. Okay. So clearly there's some thought there. Uh, let's see. Matthew says, yeah, I messed up and got addicted to OMAT. It's so easy. So easy. Uh, Dennis. Yeah. I saw pasture raised eggs at Walmart. Yes. I saw them too. Uh, it's really interesting. Let's see. Kelly says, sorry, I'm just looking for questions. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, Chessie says, I love keto eating better now. Fasting is easy for me. I often do not want to stop fasting. Very, very, very true. Uh, Pond says, does cold smoked salmon help preserve omega threes? Yes, it does. Cold smoked is always better. And smoked salmon is actually a nice way to preserve it. I just recommend you be very, very cautious. Try to go for smoked sockeye salmon. Okay. The deeper the pink, Okay, I did a video a couple of days ago talking about how why pink salmon is better. Like the pinker, the better. If it's pale, you don't want it. Okay, that's usually one that's like could have even been a sicker fish, right? In the world of wild caught, the deeper the red, the better. It's more astaxanthin, which allows it. Uh, the fish had more antioxidants, which actually protected the fatty acid profile of the fish. So yes, you know uh, when you look at any kind of cold smoke, it does preserve that better. Yeah, and smoked salmon is crazy salty. Aloha post. Uh, it definitely is, but as long as you understand that. Uh, let's see. Walnut oil. That's a good question. Walnut oil, so high omega-3 content, which is worth something. Very fragile oil, though. It is a novelty oil. It is what I call a decoration oil. It's not something I usually recommend cooking with. It's something you make a salad dressing with. It is fragile. So take olive oil, or take, uh, off, excuse me, walnut oil, even uh, some other forms of uh, like pecan oil or even macadamia nut oil I wouldn't cook with. Okay, I drizzle it and I use that as a topping, right? I use that to make my salad dressings with. And it's a very, very good fatty acid profile. It's just not something you want to cook with. Is bacon fat good to cook with? Bacon fat's not bad to cook with. Okay, but here's a hot tip. If you're cooking bacon, you want to actually cook that bacon with an additional fat in there like avocado oil or coconut oil. What that does is it makes it so that the fats within the meat don't go through what's called a heterocyclic amine process. So for those of you that gave me some slack or gave me some flack on the microwave video, if only you knew how many kilo units of basically advanced glycation end products and heterocyclic amines are created when you cook bacon. It's insane. So you cook bacon at a high temperature, you turn that bacon into a carcinogenic bomb. I'm not even kidding. And don't hate me on this. Let me, I'm telling you how to fix it. You add coconut oil or you add avocado oil, just like a tablespoon to it when you cook it at high heat and it protects it. Okay. Because what happens is when the animal fats get cooked too hot, they react with the proteins in the meat, in the bacon, and they glycate. It's like caramelization. Okay, so you're caramelizing an onion, except you're caramelizing the proteins in the bacon. And when you caramelize those proteins, it denatures and unfolds the ever living heck out of them. And then your body doesn't know how to process them. And you have glycation occurring, which triggers oxidized LDL, triggers all these problems. So people were giving me flack because I talked about a microwave being a healthy way to cook vegetables while they're meanwhile thinking they're being healthy because they're cooking their bacon in a pan at a high temperature without adding extra oil to it, which is doing probably a hundred times more damage. Point is, Always, always, always cook your bacon with a little extra oil in it. It's not adding extra fats. It's just adding a layer of protection. So <laughs> Graham says, you only need bacon for the flavor, not the fat. I'm actually with you on that. Uh, Tajman says, thank you to Thomas and Flav City. I love you both. Work together on foods. Uh, Bloss yeah, awesome. I'm going to do more stuff with Flav City. He's coming out uh, to California again in March, and we're going to do some more videos. Uh, Rebecca, definitely. Lily's chocolate is okay in keto, but it will bloat you. Uh, tapioca starch is in lots. Yeah, tapioca starch. Holy moly. Unhealthy? Not necessarily. Too much of it around? Yes. So we ran into the same problem with wheat and gluten a while ago, right? Gluten was never a big issue 50 years ago. But there's a study, I can't remember what publication it was in, that found that gluten triggered issues in today's blood samples, but not in blood samples 50 years ago. How's that? Well, it means that we've changed because of the overconsumption of it. When we overconsume something, our body starts saying, we've had enough of this. We don't need it anymore. So it sets up processes and antibodies to block it. Holy moly. So we don't even use the gluten. It just gets turned into like, you know, the protein zonulin within our body gets elevated and it triggers an autoimmune issue. 
I'm concerned that we're going to start running into that issue with tapioca because we're not supposed to be having large amounts of tapioca. Our bodies just aren't accustomed to that. It's totally not just, it's like a random thing. So what's going to happen in five, 10 years is we're going to start developing intolerances to it. And we're going to see the same people developing issues with tapioca that we are seeing with people develop with gluten. So anyhow, it's really, really wild there. Chocolate covered bacon. Hmm. Gabe, that's a good idea. Take the unsweetened baking chocolate I talked about here. Yeah, very good. Uh, Balin says your plateau videos are a lifesaver. I've been stuck at 244 now down to 230. Oh, awesome. I'm glad the plateau bluster video worked. I actually need to do more of those. Uh, what do I think about yerba mate? Common question. I'm a fan of it. I think it's a nice energy boost. I think it has some fat burning properties. I just think you need to get ones that do not have carbohydrates added to them. Um, was it still connected to zonulin? Matthew says, uh, gluten is, uh, I don't believe tapioca is. There's nothing saying that tapioca is bad right now. It's just what I'm seeing. And it's a lot of it. Best way to get rid of bottom belly fat. I'm flat. About, um, you know, I actually did some videos on that ventrilo quick. So you might just want to do a quick search for Thomas Delauer belly fat. Wow. Uh, there's so many good questions here. I need to hop on and do these more often. Um, video for skinny people. Yeah. I, Joel, I actually have an awesome video coming out. Just uh, stay tuned here in the next month or so called Ke uh, top keto foods for hard gainers. Okay. So if people that are, have a hard time gaining weight, it's not like you just want to have a bunch of calories. You actually want to have specific foods that do specific things within the body. You don't want to just add a lot of calories because that's just going to just cause a problem. We need balance. Um, why are there so many types of magnesium? I have another video coming out here in March, actually, about this magnesium, not that magnesium. And it's because, uh, well, for one, marketability, you got to think. Everyone's in business. Everyone wants a different form of magnesium. Everyone sells a different form of magnesium that do different things. So um, I would always say dimagnesium malate is the best. Uh, Bruno says, what's up, Thomas from Austin, Texas, just clarifying hundred percent, not, not grass fed grass finished, but Flav city is on his recent live that uh, whole food said that hundred percent grass fed is grass finished. It depends. So if basically the way it works is like, I know whole foods made that statement, but that doesn't mean that it's been totally finished on grass or pasture finished, even for that matter. What it means is they've given them grass fed pellets or grass pellets at some point, and they can still give them those within the last 30 days, but it doesn't mean that they were able to consume only grass the last 30 days. So what happens is they can still give them the corn and the, all the soy and everything to fatten them up, but then they add the grass pellets too. So they can still say it's hundred percent grass fed. So you have to be really, really, really careful there. So you want to look for the words grass finished because it doesn't always mean it. Otherwise, why would some brands put it and some not? It's not like it's a matter of space in the label. They could easily fit grass finished. It's more about what they're legally allowed to say. Um, I'm going to have to jump off here in just a second. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And honest says there is GMO grass. So don't let them fool you. That's a very, 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 very good point. So, um, organic grass fed grass finish in that case, second on best high heat oil. Ooh, that's a good question. Okay. I would still say, you know, we've got avocado oil and then next up in line, I would probably say beef tallow would probably be the best, but you just have to be careful with it because sometimes you can't cook the <sighs> beef tallow. Beef tallow is better than like leaf but you still, you still don't want to cook it too high. It just depends what you're cooking. Okay. So if you're cooking vegetables, it's one thing. If you're cooking protein, you're still going to glycate. So in that case, coconut oil is probably the best. I would probably say go for that. Anyhow, you guys, I've got to hop off. It's been awesome hopping on here with you all. I've got a really cool couple of videos coming out this weekend. So I ask of you all, please do hit that notification button, hit that little bell icon. It helps us out immensely. And I want to keep this channel rocking and rolling. You guys are awesome. See you all soon.